What's up guys, in this video, I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes instead of just doing a paddle review, you're gonna kinda of see what the process of me making a review or even just working is like. This video ended up being significantly longer than I thought it was going to be. I don't know how long I thought a week's worth of content was going to be, but this video could have been about an hour and a half and I got it cut down to about 40 minutes, so I totally understand if no one makes it through this video since I'm not actually reviewing a paddle. However, there are a lot of paddles we talk about throughout the video that you might want to hear about a little bit. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know down below because this is some content I would like to experiment with, so if more people like this style of content but in shorter form, just let me know. Part of my routine this year is that I'm going to get on the court every single day at one o'clock to go hit paddles and get through reviews faster because before my brother was working for me, I didn't have anyone to really hit with in the middle of the day or it was always hard to organize. So I wasn't getting to hit as often as I would like. Now that my brother works for me, I can drag him out of editing and we can go hit. So every day I'm gonna be hitting so that we can get through some paddle reviews just a little bit quicker because paddles are always showing up. I mean, look at this shelf right here. These are all paddles that showed up recently haven't gotten to hit those yet. So we'll probably take a bunch of those out and give them a shot and see how they are. But yeah, eat some lunch and then we're gonna go hit the courts. All right, so we're at the courts and it's actually February and we're outside with no snow. I've literally never seen this in Minnesota before. It's almost 50 degrees. Hitting two paddles, the Harache, which is what I'm actually reviewing, the Blackout, which we'll have more interesting stuff to talk about this later. So I'll probably have my brother hit this while I'm testing this. Don't even. I dunked. You have a stat boost in this environment. I've got no sunglasses. Yeah, the stat boost is that I'm better. Whoa. <laughs> Thanks, Vulcan ball. Vulcan, baby. That did not come up. That thing just stayed on the ground. That's in the cold too. That's the ball we were using yesterday and it really yeah that's got gonna... like maybe six games on it all in like 50 degrees. You can already see a couple big flat spots. It just shoots off in different directions. Not always, but Yep, <laughs> right there. <laughs> it's it's the it's the like two or three out of ten that just jump funky. Piece of junk. This... We're gonna have a dozen get to the kitchen counter in this video. Oh, didn't get there. I was at the kitchen. You have to be neutral. If the ball is, if you're not dinking, <laughs> you didn't make it to the kitchen. Yeah. Shoot. Nah. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I got it back. I mean, you still didn't make it to the kitchen. <laughs> All right, so we just finished up a hitting session. It was pretty good. Blackout's a fun paddle. The Hirache, I basically, I've already formed most of my opinion, but Usually what I do before I start writing is I hit, if there's a paddle I'm comparing it to, in this case, the double black diamond is kind of what I think the Parache is similar to. I always go out and hit them side by side. So that way when I go right, it's like extremely fresh in my head and I'm not guessing. So that was kind of today, just did some regular drilling. Um, and then also I started, I've been wearing protective eyewear for a while. Like in the summer, I always just wear some sunglasses one because of the sun but also because of i don't want to get hit in the face but indoors now i've also started wearing protective eyewear honestly i just think more people should probably be wearing them than are currently wearing them i don't think it's worth getting hit in the face the way i view it is all it takes is one someone to hit an errant ball and it smacks me in an eye and i lose vision for the rest of my life like i've already heard a couple stories of that so i just don't think it's worth it so yeah he left out the part conveniently that he got his butt whooped today in skinny singles Bye. it was Yours literally truly. it was like 9 11. <laughs> because i gave him a ball that was four inches out and we Dude, played even, it anyways. Even, even with that it was still like 8 11. i still whooped his butt this guy, this guy doesn't want his paycheck for the month. That's what I just heard. So I just came home and I got a package. This one is from Gamma. You guys are going to find out throughout this video that I get a crap ton of packages every week. In fact, one of my wife's least favorite things about this job is probably how many boxes end up in this house because of paddles or just whatever showing up. All right, we've got one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight paddles. That is a lot of paddles. Gamma Obsidian, this is a 10 millimeter. That is extremely thin. I'm super curious what the stats are on this because I feel like the twist weight is not gonna be great. This is another Obsidian. This one is 13 millimeter. Okay, so there's a 10 millimeter Obsidian, a 13 millimeter Obsidian, a 16 millimeter Obsidian. You're not gonna complain about having options of different ones. Okay, so this is the Gamma Airbender. Let's see, the airbender blows your competition away. This paddle features a gritty... And Zorbicon Shockbuster technology. Companies come up with the wild... Zorbicon? Z-O-R-B-I-C-O-N. Zorbicon Shockbuster technology. Man, I know you gotta brand your stuff, but like, I don't even know what that means. But let's see what this paddle is. This is probably more interesting than the obsidian. I think the obsidians are just thermoformed versions of the last obsidian. Okay, so throat hole, this is not new. We've seen this who knows how many times. We've seen a lot of Alibaba versions, but I will say, uh, interestingly enough, they like textured the edge here, if you can see that. I'm actually curious how, lead, how well lead tape will stick to this. It's not super raised, but it's just enough that I wonder how it'll adhere. I feel like they did this just to be different, but that might make lead tape a little bit more annoying. And then handle feels really solid. Like that feels really well built. So these are weighted. The first one is three grams. The second one is six grams and the other one is nine grams. So three grams, it goes up each, which is 0.1 ounces, 0.2 and 0.3 ounces. Let's see if it says, oh, okay. There was a placeholder. So there's actually two holes in this. Okay, interesting. So here's the placeholder one. I don't know what this one weighs. And then you have different weighted ones that you can place inside the throat here. And then you can see that. So I'm curious if this actually makes it feel any different uh, in terms of shock absorption. I mean, that's common in tennis rackets, but haven't seen it in pickleball yet. However, I will say, and I'm curious if there was a shared factory or anything, or if it just happened to be funny coincidence, but Rockney also just came out with a paddle that has weights where there's like three holes here, here, and here, and these slot in, and they're like 0.5 ounces each, which is actually kind of heavy. So I'm curious, I don't know, it just seems like a similar concept. Um, I'd almost be willing to bet they're the same material, even though I don't have the Rockney yet. So, okay, that's... That's interesting. I've just finished working on the script or I'm not really done yet, but I've gotten most of it done. You can see that pretty much the whole outline right here is pretty much complete. The main things now are just thinking of small things to explain to you guys as the viewers. Whenever I'm doing a review, I always wanna make sure that people have as clear of a picture of how the paddle performs as I can give. So whether that's things I noticed on court or other paddles you can compare it to to make it more relatable, just things like that. So there's certain things I wanna kinda of go back through the script and be like, here's kinda of how it felt while dinking, here's kinda of how it felt in hands, and so on. I just think that helps uh, take the script up a little bit. But I'll probably pause on this for now and just go work on some miscellaneous stuff. There's a bunch of random files, I need to organize some gameplay clips for other reviews, and then I also need to finish writing my newsletter for next week. So, a lot of small things to work on, nothing super flashy, but just stuff that has to get done at some point, you know? All right, so we've got another package. This one is from Rockney, and this one actually might be pretty interesting, like I was saying yesterday about that Gamma paddle. This isn't raw carbon, this looks like it's paint grit. Then you've got these three holes here, and then you can slot in these rubber weights, just like the gamma ones from yesterday. And honestly, these look really similar. Where, hang on, let me pull all these out. So the gamma ones are smaller. So they're not the same, but they are the same concept. All right, paddle out of the box weighs 8.3 ounces, and these do indeed weigh about 0.5 ounces. So you could make this paddle a really, really heavy boy 
that went up to 9.6 ounces. Let's check the let's check the stats. I'm really curious. So this is what I'm really interested in because if you guys recall, the Adidas Metal Bone barely changed at all when you added the stuff inside of it. So if we do this one, swing weight with all three of them in gives us a reading that is heavy. 140 is the reading we get with all three in. That's crazy. So with all three rubber weights inside, we get a twist weight of 6.09. So based on how low that is, I'm gonna guess that this is not gonna change a lot with and without these. The swing weight might, but I don't think the twist weight will. All right, swing weight with the center one out only dropped to 139. All right, so it's kind of just a heavy paddle as it is. It's a 133 swing weight with all of the weights moved or removed. Mm, interesting. It actually goes down quite a bit without the other one. So without the side weights here, it goes down to 5.71. So a 0.3 ish increase is kind of noticeable, but it's still in that low twist weight territory. But yeah, out of the box, this is just heavy. Like just like the Adidas metal bone, this is in a spot where things don't change much. Now, granted, a seven point swing weight change, that's significantly more than say the Adidas metal bone, but you're still not really getting to choose where you place that. And I don't really know how helpful this spot is overall. So cool concept, might not be that cool on court. It's also edgeless. We're seeing that the twist weight's low. It's not raw carbon fiber. All right, so in the hour that I have been gone, three more packages have showed up today. This is the six zero bag that has been being teased for I don't even know how long. Boom, six zero bag. All right, so it's definitely not the exact same as the carbon bag because this zipper here is a lot bigger. Ooh, that's a huge center compartment. Ooh, I might actually, ooh, yeah, that's definitely taller. Ooh, I actually might kind of like this just for, specifically for what I do, because when I go to the course, I have to bring a crap ton of paddles. So this actually might be kind of nice for me. Okay, so looking at this bag, it has to be heavily inspired by the carbon bag. In fact, I think these might be the same hooks in the same spot as the carbon bag. And while it is not identical, there are some differences. The center compartment seems to be significantly larger. Oh, and there's some pockets in the center compartment. Okay, that's actually nice. Okay, is this a zipper on the inside too? There's gonna be some pros and cons between the two, I think. And I might lean toward the 6-0 bag because it's a lot bigger on the inside, but this is definitely comparable to the carbon bag. I think if you already have a carbon bag, the only reason you'd probably wanna get this is because it's a lot larger. Beyond that, uh, I did buy a saw this week. I can't remember if I filmed anything about that, but I went to my buddies and I cut open some paddles. We cut open a Friday paddle and we cut open a Vatic. And this is something I wanna do more this year uh, just to see what's actually inside of a lot of paddles. I understand generally what is inside them, how they're built, but I do think when companies are making certain claims, it's good to be able to verify those claims and see if they're actually doing it. And also I wanna know if cores are core crushed still. Um, so I did the Friday just cause I don't know, I was curious what was inside it. Honestly, nothing too interesting about this. Um, if I bring this close, you might be able to see, uh, if my camera will focus, but uh, core is intact. It's got some injected foam. Now here's what's interesting. Here is the handle and this, you would, might think that's polymer. This is all foam the entire way around. So right here, it's a much harder foam. Here, it's a much softer foam. I just thought this was interesting that this is all encased in foam. There are a lot of paddles, especially the thermoformed ones where the foam runs on these sides, but I haven't seen, haven't seen that side or this white foam that's in the core. So I thought that was interesting. Now the other one, we did cut open a Vatic just because I had it on hand as an extra one. This one actually was core crushed. See how it's like crunched in certain areas? It is crushed. Now, before people go nuts and they jump on Vatic and go, oh my gosh, core crush. Uh, this is a really old one. I believe this is one that they gave me from like way back. Like this is from like April or whenever they sent me paddles, like beginning of 2023. So I'd be curious to cut open a newer one and see if they're still having the issue. But yeah, I don't know, I'm just curious. So I might cut even more of these open. 
All right, it's Monday, 8 a.m., and I am currently getting footage ready for the podcast. One of the things we want to do this year is have more B-roll, so when we're talking about something, you guys can actually see what we're talking about, because this is something a lot of you requested, and honestly, I think it's a great idea. It was just last year, time-wise, it was hard to fit in. So, my brother's going to come pick up the podcast at 9. I just finished downloading Will's files. Um, that's actually why we record on Sunday, is because... Will has to send me his files and his internet's not exactly fast and we want the news out on Monday because I just think that's the best day to get the podcast out. So one of the things we started using late last year was monday.com to organize our projects better once my brother started working for me since he needs to know what's going on. So this is actually for our podcast. I have all of the steps just outlined then once he gets here. Just keeps everything very organized, easier for us to manage and has been extremely helpful when working with another person because before it was only me. I could keep everything in my head, but I realized as soon as I hired my brother, it was like, okay, he doesn't know what's in my head. So I need another place to organize this. And monday.com made that a lot easier for us. All right. So we got four paddles to hit today. Harache X is the main one that we need to focus on, but then we have the six zero paddles, the Jame pro version, the regular black diamond, and then the double black diamond. This will be the last time I hit these before I write my review and we record everything tomorrow. Oh, good start. Heck yeah, baby. Get out of here. <laughs> you, how many times? Hey, you had a neck cord too. No, 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 never. <laughs> I'm making a net cord compilation. Dude, it's so stupid. <laughs> Out. Oh my word. <laughs> this guy's a ball magnet. How did this guy get to the top court at Mecca? <laughs> All right, we are back home. Uh, finished a hitting session with my brother to finalize my thoughts on the Harache X today. Went to the gym, came back home. Of course, there's another package with more paddles in it. So, uh, so we're going to check this one out. Uh, this one's from Engage. All right, so we've got four different Engage paddles here. I actually don't know much about these. Okay, Engage Evolution. Okay, so this one, the Extreme V2.14, which I assume stands for 14 millimeter. Uh, this is falls under their budget category, which I believe was, yeah, Engage Evolution. That's their like not made in the US uh, version. So, okay, I guess that's just a raw carbon fiber version. This one is the Pursuit MX Max. Now, what's interesting about this one is it says Enhanced Friction Carbon. And this one, I believe, if I look at their website, is $200. So, let's just go ahead and find out here. This is the microscope that I use. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and check the surface really quick. And that is using a peel ply surface. So, that should be raw carbon fiber. Interesting that, or wait. Yeah, that's, oh, that's the extreme, sorry. Okay, so the extreme is using a raw carbon fiber surface. And it looks like the Max is as well. The Max feels a little different to the touch. It's like not as clean of a peel ply texture. If you, when I look at the extreme, it's a much cleaner texture, more what we're similar to. It's a little messier or not as clearly defined of a pattern on the Max. So it's unclear to me, but I guess we'll just have to check the RPMs of this and see how it is. But clearly, just by looking at the price of it on the website, it is meant to be a lower tier Pursuit Pro or in, you know, another option that's below that. So something had to have gotten downgraded into the fact that they say enhanced friction carbon makes me think that it's probably a cheaper alternative to what they're doing on the Pursuit Pro or 
something else entirely. I'm not entirely sure right now. Today is a recording day. We're gonna film the Hirache X review, so I'm gonna show you guys what setting up my office to film that looks like. All right, so the first major component that we have that makes this setup work is this giant dome light here, which I'm going to move into position right about here or so. You can see this takes up a lot of space in my room. This thing is absolutely gigantic. And then I also have a monitor mounted right here because I use a teleprompter and I can't see my camera monitor when I'm using the teleprompter. So camera is gonna go somewhere around here. And then we also bought these big tube lights, which I'll turn on here. You can see these can add quite a bit of light. Uh, I just wanted something to light up the background a little bit more, so these are kind of fun to play with. All right, so now I'm just gonna show you what this looks like when there's no light. So this is absolutely nothing turned on in my light, and we're gonna turn them on one by one. So here's my key light. Honestly, this alone would be more than enough for just YouTube. Like, no one's gonna complain if they had to look at this. Then after that, I would turn on my hair light. So now you can see we get a nice little light up here and then it also hits my shoulder, which just makes me stand out more. So if we toggle that on and off, just makes me pop out from the background a little bit more. From here, we can turn on these. So we have one and then two. I don't know that I love red and blue, but I'm gonna try it for now just cause it looks interesting enough. We'll turn on the shelf light, which is back there and just hits the paddles a little bit. And then we have a corner light, which just gives you a little bit more like visual appeal in this area. All right, so we just finished recording my Hirache X review. So now I'm going to prep some of those files, bring them over to my brother. And then today we're going to spend some time shooting all of the B-roll of this paddle, which is actually gonna be pretty fun because we got quite a few new toys to make our stuff look even better. So I am really excited to start messing with that. Also, for size comparison, here is that light dome. You can see it next to my head. It absolutely engulfs my head. This thing is massive. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what that looks like. All right, so we're at my brother's now. This is where we film a lot of the B-roll. You can see the backdrop there. We have, we got a little fancier this year. We have all the lights mounted on the ceiling. We have another big dome. And then this is our new toy. This is a big uh, automated slider. And then, you know, we shoot the paddle there or whatever. So we've shot a bunch of stuff in here. Same stuff, little wall for the paddles that we're working on or whatever. But something that we deal with all the time when filming paddles, and it drives me absolutely nuts with companies, is uh, I'm going to set this down. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, now it's standing up. Five <laughs> seconds ago, it was falling over. This one might get a pass. But a lot of times, we get paddles. Actually, now it's going to fall. I don't know why it worked there. Anyways. It's falling now, so we bought these clamps, which are actually for video production. It's how we hold our lights, but you can just toss the paddle in here and then lock it down. You don't want to squeeze too hard because you actually probably could break the handle. But boom, now it holds level. And half the time we don't even have to show the handle, it's the face that we're usually looking at. So it's not a big deal to have this, but yeah, this is the easy way for us to deal with it. Companies, please, please stop doing these stupid rounded butt caps. Paddle Tech, you're the worst offender, just so you know. All right, so we've been messing with this thing for like two hours now. This is the software to control the thing, which was very much built by engineers and not people who know how to make a good UI. So we have literally not even shot a single shot, and you can see the slider is still over there. I think when we get this, it will be great, but there's a bunch of small things on how the camera moves that is not great that we have to figure out. So we kind of have to learn how to use this thing before we can do anything else. But yeah, we're like two hours deep with no work done. All right, so we're leaving my brother's. I was here for probably four hours and we just could not get the slider to work the way we wanted. Every single time there was just like a really small jitter at the end of every movement that it wasn't supposed to be doing. So we contacted support and they'll probably get back to us tomorrow. But this is, I will say, this is the annoying thing about involving filmmaking things into these YouTube videos because this is gonna look sick. Like when we make this finally work, like it is gonna be awesome. No one is doing this type of stuff and it just adds that extra little level of production quality. 
But days like today, I'm like, dude, we burned four hours, didn't get a single shot filmed, and now, you know, we're not behind. Technically, we weren't supposed to start filming until tomorrow, so by filming today, we were actually a little ahead of schedule, but it's definitely still frustrating having gotten nothing done today, and like my head just feels fried because we're looking through documentation, we're trying all these different things that you know, you're working with just a piece of software the entire time, so. All right, what's up, guys? Today is Wednesday. Uh, kind of a weird work day. We just have a mismatch of a bunch of stuff we got to do. But right now, I'm working on an updated lead tape video. So we're going to do something that I haven't really seen anyone talk about, which is, would it be better to use these pre-cut 3 gram per inch strips, which are much sm smaller, or 1 gram per inch, but covers more area of the paddle? I've actually been a big fan of these 3 gram strips, but I started thinking about it and covering more area of the paddle would increase your twist weight more than this would. At least that's what I think right now. So it'll be interesting. I think this will increase swing weight a little bit less, this a little bit more, but you'll get more twist weight. So I'm gonna make a whole video about this, but right now I need to do a bunch of experiments with the graffiti and cutting all this lead. So we're gonna do that really quick. Okay, so we've got our Carbon 3X here, which is going to be our test dummy for the day. And we're just going to try a bunch of different spots and see how the lead ends up impacting things. So we'll kind of go up around the entire paddle and write down all these stats in a little database that I have. Okay, so we just finished the last like two hours of doing lead tape testing and now this is how the spreadsheet is looking. It's significantly more filled out with a lot of data. I haven't gotten to look through it yet and see how things kind of correlate, but I've still got even more tests that I need to run, but we have to go hit today at one o'clock to film for the Harache review. And then I also have a bunch of emails that I need to respond to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right. So this is our other lifetime. All of these courts, there's five of them. They're all championship sized. This is the closest lifetime to us that we usually film at. This is the other brother. You don't see this one very often. Best looking brother questionable <laughs> so yeah we're gonna film some paddle b-roll we've already been doing that gonna get some of this and then call it a day okay so one of the things i'm gonna do now is we kind of filmed an intro for the harache x so i'm gonna try and edit this with some sound effects music and just make it look good overall and see what we got All right, so there's still a lot to do on this, but in about 20 minutes or so, this is what I've gotten the intro to. All right, goodbye to all these paddles. This is gonna be painful, but uh, I don't know, could be interesting. Today we're gonna be cutting open some pickleball paddles. This is something that I want to do in my reviews more often just to verify what's actually inside of paddles, see if anyone is lying about anything, and also check for core corruption and other things. But I thought I would do a video just breaking down some of the most popular paddles, even if I've already reviewed them. So we have a butt ton of paddles we're gonna cut open today, and we're gonna start with the Zane Pro XR. Because some people think this is thermoformed, but Pro XR told me it was not thermoformed when it launched. So we're just gonna find out myself. All right, perfect. The edge guard even came off for me, so this will be easier to verify here. But if my camera wants to focus, or is that just me that's playing? It actually might be my goggles. Hey, would you look at that? Thermoformed. Thanks, ProXR, for giving me wrong information when this launched. So there's the edge guard fully removed. You can see that that does have the carbon seam. And if we check here, you can also see the foam injection. If we zoom in a bit, you might be able to see that a little bit easier. There is the foam injection, and there's the core. Check for core corruption. Nope, looks fine. Looks pretty healthy. That's a pretty small amount of foam though, compared to a lot of paddles I've seen. So that may explain a little bit why the sweet spot on this is not as good as some others. And actually, 
Looks like I can actually pull off their carbon seam here. Yep. So there's their carbon seam and there's the core on the inside. All right guys, it's Friday. We're gonna test a bunch of paddles. Got a bag full of paddles here and we're just gonna see if any of them are actually interesting and things that we should be checking out. This, this one is interesting on John's podcast. He was talking about how you can like, he felt like you could really feel it flex. Flex, yeah. And I feel like you can way more than the alchemy. Oh, way, yeah, yeah, way more. All right, this one's interesting. I might come back to this. That thing is a bit faster. Yeah, it does feel pretty decently poppy off the face. All right. Also, the chorus in the interesting list. Let's see what we got in the bag of goodies. This one's interesting because I feel like it's just supposed to be a dumbed down Pursuit Pro. Yeah. Also, I think my edge guard's already loose at the top. This thing is literally brand new. What the heck, man? Breaking it already. This is why I laugh when people are like, oh, I bet every company sends you loaded paddles. I'm like, dude, they can't even send me a paddle that's assembled. <laughs> Engage, not that interesting. The Engage Extreme. Sorry. Hey. I haven't looked to see how much this is yet, but this is actually kind of good. I hope it's not 260. I have a feeling it's probably just a thermo of some kind. <laughs> this is also pretty nice. That thing is, it feels good. I like the shape and the color. The like rounded edge on both sides. I do sides like that. Yeah. It's nice. I wonder if this one's not manufactured in the USA. No, that one's not. That's their overseas model. Makes sense. Aha, the spoon. Oh yes, the spoon. The spoon. Bro, this is how you know this paddle's been sitting around when the plastic is yellow. Yeah. That one has been sitting actually a really long time. You ain't gonna counter nothing. About to destroy is what I'm about to do. <laughs> <laughs> Some resets. <laughs> All right, spoon. That you missed because of the paddle. Eh, maybe. All right, I may revisit this. This is not, the peak hole is not as bad as I thought it would be. All right, Harache control. Yeah, this is just like your standard gen one. Ha, oh, you are lucky. I think you're lucky you didn't receive a accelerated counter like that. <laughs> Okay, so we just finished hitting and these were some of the ones that we thought were more interesting. I found this Engage Evolution Extreme pretty interesting. Uh, not a huge fan of the shape, the handle's a little bit shorter, but uh, really stiff paddle, got a lot of spin, good power, had really good feel off the face. I think in hands battles it was nice. Drive, yeah, the, the drives. The 14 is really stiff. Yeah, drives like felt great. Pursuit Pro that's stiffer. Yeah, yep. So it's just stiff, stiff feedback, not necessarily more power than the Pro, yep. but just the feedback in your hands is a bit stiffer. Uh, this Crypt was really grip. interesting. Grip. Or it's a G. Gri ah, Grip, yeah, yeah. Uh, this super heavy weighted butt cap, what would you say, 30 grams? Yeah, 30 grams. Crazy, uh, changes the feel of the paddle super fast. So if you like- It's like really whippy. Yeah, it gets super whippy after you change it out. If you buy one of these, like play with it with a light cap and then put this thing in, Massive difference, very interesting. This was kind of fun to play with. Yep. Uh, the paddle itself was fine. I wouldn't say it's anything super special, but the butt cap concept, yeah. every company should be doing that. I was because say, it's more so, companies yeah, did this. So much be better good. than lead in the handle. Yeah, I agree. This uh, Shape Shifter by Chorus. Yeah, was, this one was pretty good. This, I, actually, I actually liked that more than I thought I would. Yeah, really cool paddle. paddle. It's got that 18K carbon face, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it had a ton of pop, like in hands battles when we switched, he actually was using this Groovin paddle and they yep. switched to this and noticeably, instantly, the, the counters and speed ups got much faster yeah. right off the bat. So this was a very interesting paddle. Yep. Uh, have to hit this one more. And then the 
The Spoon, baby. The Spoon the by P. Spoon. Cole. This thing was nuts. Uh, insanely long handle. Like it almost feels like a seven inch handle because of how it tapers. Um, obviously it looks tiny, but if you put it next to a regular paddle, you're actually not losing necessarily that much yeah. space. Like it's not, I guess if you put was it, it Is it head, 17 inches? Yeah, I think it's 17 inches, but you really don't lose that much. You don't lose that much. Hands battles was insanely fast. It's it so a, whippy. The swing weight just is like low. just like crank the ball. Yeah, and it's so whippy that you generate more speed on your, your counters and, and hands battles. And then drives. I'd have to play with it more, but if you can get your drives over, man, this thing whips the ball. Yeah. The struggle, obviously, is going to be resets and dinks was a bit of a struggle, but uh, very fun to play with. I don't know if I'd use it, but yeah. very entertaining. It's definitely paddle. easier to use than the Franklin trainer. I yes. thought it would be as hard as that, but it's I think not. this would just be a better version of a training paddle. Yeah. More realistic. Yeah, probably more realistic. All right, last three. This is J5. I've had this forever, and I never really hit it that much but more people have been asking about it mm. and i hit this one a long time ago and yeah. tested it like back in middle of the summer yeah and john q talked about this but like when you hit like it you feel like you can feel the whole face flex like yeah i'm sure it's part of the materials inside of it because it's not just carbon fiber i believe but like when you take a full swing like it hits really hard counters are really nice um i don't know that the 17 inch length would be my favorite but these were a lot more interesting than I thought they were. Mm -hmm. I also think better than the Alchemy. The Alchemy never really, I don't know, it just didn't feel yeah, the I, same I as Yeah, I played this. with the Alchemy for a while too, for a few weeks, uh, and I kind of liked it, but this, I'd say, was more fun and more interesting to play with. Had a bit better feedback than the Alchemy. This yeah. one was a bit more fun. So this this could be interesting. Um, reminds me almost of like a 002-ish. Maybe not quite as poppy off the face, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. No. Uh, last two, Loco. I have this has been out for a while, and I just haven't mm -hmm. had time to hit it. This was actually I don't know that it's a paddle that I would switch to, but it for being thermoformed, it was a little softer than I expected. So like resets and dinking felt really good. It was more plush than a double black diamond. Yeah. Um, Very so, control oriented. Yeah, definitely control oriented, but I didn't feel like it gave up like. It's definitely, I mean, compared to this, it's not got the same power, but like it wasn't horrible. Mm -hmm. It's like in an all court category, but uh, I don't know. It's like maybe on the control side before you would creep into the all court, but this actually is a pretty good paddle. So if you're looking for something a little softer, I did not mind this. Mm -hmm. I actually thought I played pretty well with it. Yeah. Um, so this is pretty good. And then the last one, the Groove and Move In, they've been sending me a lot of paddles. This one, I just kind of like how it looks. Yeah. Like it just feels very symmetrical with the very rounding. Fluid. The blue is nice. The branding is nice. I don't love the ribbed grip. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of dumb. But if you love the original Electra Model E in that shape, yeah. I feel like this is just a better version of the E. It's almost like an improved Model E Elite. Yeah. That's what I'd say yeah, this is. Yeah, I could see that. I, I like this more than the Elite, and I like the shape, and it felt a little better. Yeah, um, I'd have to hit them side by side, but I actually did like this paddle. It's definitely a stiffer paddle, yeah. um, but I didn't, I didn't mind that. I think, I think if this shape, if you're fine with the slightly shorter handle, which isn't quite for me, this is definitely a good paddle. And I think they're like 160. -ish. Resets were really easy. Yeah. Drives actually felt really good too. Yep. Um, dinking is obviously super easy with this paddle. Yeah. So no good. real, no Overall, real complaints. Yeah. 